We're back on the big show, and it's always nice to talk to a gorgeous friend who I've known for years and fancied as long as I can remember. Uh, Letitia Dean, how are you? Hello, nice to see you again, babe. How are you doing? Do you know, the last time we spoke face to face was 10 years ago, and you haven't changed. Oh, it's very kind of you. It's good lighting in this room. How do you do it? I mean, you're still here, and there's a lot of people come and go, aren't they? Let's face it, in show business, especially from soaps. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been lucky to have quite a long career, really. I think I've been in the business now nearly 35 years. It's got to be something. Can't believe I'm even <laughs> saying it. So, did he send us for that, gosh, 22 years? Years, something like that so yeah it's been ticking along okay it's been a big year for EastEnders was there a moment when you thought oh, I want to go back or I, I need to be part of that again I was so jealous of the live episode I would have loved to have done that and I didn't get to see it because I was on stage at the time so I missed it unfortunately but I'd love to have done that I must say they did a great job almost too good because it almost looked like it wasn't live Oh, really? So slinky, the way they produced it. Yeah. And it seems like in the old days, there were more people like you that stuck out. I don't know half the names of the people in it now. Are you still a huge fan or, or are you too busy? I can't. Well, I, I dip into it sometimes on the Sunday Omnibus, but, you know, because I haven't watched it regularly for a while. I don't know who, who a lot of the um, characters are in it. But it's always nice to see me old faithfuls like, like June Brown and Adam Woody at, to be part of something when it's just beginning, you know. It was, it was incredibly exciting. And, of course, I was a baby then. I was only 16, so it's like... <laughs> Like, oh, what's happening to me? It's just incredible. What I wonder about you now is you're very normal and everything seems to be fine. I wonder if you'd start today at 16 and be the star that you became, whether you'd handle it the same, because the business has changed, hasn't it, with the red tops and the gossip magazines? Yeah, it has changed an awful lot. I mean, I'd like to think, you know, that I'm relatively grounded. I think it's, you know, it's how you're brought up, isn't it, really, and stuff. And, you know, as lovely as it is, the end of the day, it's a job. There's a lot more focus on them than there was when I was that age, certainly. You know, we had a little bit of it, but nothing like it is now. Is it fun being you today? Because, I mean, I've just sat through Calendar Girls here uh, in Birmingham. You're on tour and you sing and you dance and you act and you do all different things and you move from production to production. You're an all-rounder, really, and that kind of old-fashioned star that can do everything. <laughs> yes, Gam. Well, I went to Sylvia Young <laughs> Theatre School, as you, as you know, and stuff. And, you know, that's what we trained in, like being all-rounders. And I honestly thought that when I was younger that I'd probably go down the musical theatre route really that was always like my dream and my love and then like as you know EastEnders came along early and it didn't quite happen so I like to dip my toe back into it actually at some point is there a dream role that you'd like oh gosh dream role oh so many I'd like like Oklahoma like there's a part called Ada Wani I'd love to play her I like character parts. That's what I'd like to, to have a crack at. Well, I tell you, when I first saw Wicked and that Glinda role, the, the fairy thing, I mean, you could do that brilliantly. Do you know what? I couldn't sing it. Oh, listen to me. I'm not, I'm not sound like Jack Whitworth today, do I? I'm right low today. I don't think I've got, I could squeeze those notes out. So I'm thinking more character roles. A little, you know, an actress who, who can sing a little. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thin Keeper's Wife. What's life like on the road? Because it's not terribly glamorous in these wonderful dressing rooms, is it? Actually, the one that we're sitting in is rather lovely in comparison um, to some. But it's, it's, it's nice touring and playing different venues and, you know, and, and visiting different cities and stuff. But that can, it can get a bit tiring, to be honest, you know, and none of us are getting any younger. <laughs> you know, so the shaking around is always a bit difficult. But, you know, it's such a lovely company we've got here and it's got a really nice vibe. You know, it's a nice, relaxed atmosphere and stuff. It's a tough gig, though. I noticed today at the Birmingham Hippodrome, which is a huge theatre, one of the biggest in the country, no PA system. So you've really got a boom, haven't you? Yeah, and I think as well, it's having keeping the diction clear, really. I mean, that you know, sometimes it's easy to gobble up words, isn't it, and stuff. But obviously a theatre like this is used to more musicals and mi microphones, really. Would you rather do a small, intimate crowd where you can kind of bring it in a bit? Because you've got to sell this, haven't you, to reach the back? Yeah, absolutely. You've really got to sell this. I mean, I, I like both, to be honest. I mean, it'd be quite nice to play a smaller venue as well. But um, I don't think we've, we're working in any that are any under 1,200 seats, something. Oh. In terms of TV, where would you like to go next? Because there aren't that many roles around. Is this a dream gig that you'd like? I don't know. I've always been sort of, I just sort of play it by ear and see what happens, really. I mean, I haven't done telly for a bit, actually. I'd like to maybe have another go at something. I don't know what, though. I have to wait and see. There's not much being made at the moment, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to go more serious? Because, of course, the role you played in EastEnders, everybody loved and likeable. Is there something in you that you'd like to kind of play with us a bit and become evil? Oh, yes. Well, I've done my Wicked Queen. Does that count? My fa fabulous line I say in the beginning of it, greetings, low life, bow down and grovel. 
I enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think most actors would like a bit of variety, really, in, in their work. But it's, you know, it's whether it comes up or not is a problem. <laughs> I saw you in Panto once, and you do a great job at it. The actual getting through two shows a day, six days a week yeah. for six weeks, how is it possible that you don't kill yourself by the end? It is quite hard, actually, because uh, with the Panto I just finished, and on Saturdays we had three shows. Oh, I thought I'd misread it. I went, are you sure? Or three? That nearly killed me. And I'd started this job literally the next day after I finished that. So it's, it's, it's quite tough doing, or well, the panto schedule is particularly tough. I mean, with the play, it's twice a week you get the matinee, so you can't really complain. How do you know whether you're in the middle of the first one or the end of the second one or about to start the third one on those three show days? Oh, it, well, it's like Groundhog Day, isn't it? You're in the middle of a scene, you think, I just said that. <laughs> yeah, where am I? Who am I? What play am I in? Yeah, it, it's quite, it, you've got to really concentrate. As you say, you've been doing this about 400 years now. Who have you enjoyed working with? Who's taught you something or inspired you? Oh, loads of people I've loved working with, actually. On this production, Linda's been very helpful. Linda Bellingham, she's fab. Anita Dobson was great, you know, for me. And June Brown, you know, and they're all still good friends and everything. So they were, I mean, June and, and Pam with St. Clement as well. They're all big influences on me, you know, growing up. I mean, June's such a legend, and she oh. was in this. Did you get to work with her in this before? No, I didn't, but she, I went to see her in it, obviously, and she came to see this in uh, our version in Chichester. I went, oh, what a shame we couldn't do it together. I'd love to work with June again. She's just a top woman. I've never met anybody like her. She's like Kenneth Williams with the wit. She's brilliant, isn't she? And, you know, the fact <laughs> is that she's so funny as Doc Cotton, yet she's so truthful, isn't she? She's just incredible. I really think she should become a dame. We call her that anyway, Dame Brown. Mm. <laughs> what is being an actor? Because to act really well, you've got to make it look like you're not acting. Hmm. I think the, the key is, is to be in the moment, really, and, you know, good old-fashioned listening, <laughs> really. You know, because sometimes, you know, if somebody's got a lot of dialogue and you're saying nothing, it can be very easy not to, to keep the focus. So I think, that, I think that's the key. And very finally, staying glamorous and gorgeous, and that's why you get all these roles. How do you manage it? What diet are you on? Is it Rosemary Connolly, Atkins? How do you do it? I just had a lovely jacket potato and baked beans. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, just, you know, just keeping fit, really. You know, I do it about three times a week. I can't manage you to. do what three times a week? Bit of gym work, oh. you know. It's all a bit boring, really. And a bit of that, but, it, you know, it's got to be done. And running around the play, the energy of a play, really, you know, that keeps you fit. The adrenaline kicking and the costume changes on this are so quick. I can't, there's brass flying off. <laughs> <laughs> Trousers coming down. Yes, yeah, so that keeps you going. <laughs> so you can't be proud when you're in this business? Not really, no. You soon get over it. It's like people always say, oh, what's it like having to take your top off on the stage? Well, I was more worried about the piano, which I've got to apologise. I completely messed it up today. Did you notice? No. Oh, it, was, it sounded like Les Dawson. It was awful. <laughs> well, I think the thing is when there's, there's an actress playing a piano, we presume you're not playing it anyway because we wouldn't think you'd have that talent. Oh, you're very kind. I can play my six chords. <laughs> well, not today, <laughs> evidently. I was terrible today on the piano. Nobody noticed. That's a good thing about it. Congratulations on being you. I'll see you in another 10 years. I wonder what you'll be doing then. Oh, gosh. Hopefully sitting down in, in the armchair, probably. Letitia Dean, thanks for talking to me. <laughs> thanks, Sam.